What's going on guys, it's Austin here with another chapter of Chainsaw Man Chapter 125. This is a really weird action-packed chapter where we get the most unexpected slice of life we've seen so far in this series. So enough of the recap, let's fall into Chapter 125. The chapter starts off with the Falling Devil casually ripping the eyes and the ears out of random pedestrian seemingly going on a shopping spree for a final dish Asa La Yuru that was mentioned last chapter. And as she remarks how many eyes and ears she has, she heads on over to the local supermarket to go get an apple. We see the falling double crushing this poor grocery store worker who I'm sure is severely underpaid, especially with having to deal with something like this. And the falling double inquires what varieties of apples do you sell that goes well with human flesh, clearly on some Jeffrey Dahmer and some Gorney Ramsey type of vibes. Now, what's interesting about all of this is that the poor old lady is begging for her life, and the falling double, calm and elegant as ever, states that unless someone were to attack her first, she won't get hostile, and this leaves the old lady stunned and speechless. And this is strange, because previously, whenever we've seen devils come to earth, like the cockroach devil, the tomato devil, or the cucumber devil, They've all came to Earth to cause some level of chaos and destruction, either by just causing damage to the local area or just eating humans. I don't think the Fallen Devil is lying about this, because as far as the people that she's killed so far, the only people that ended up dying in her path of destruction were the poor victims that make up her body, the devil hunters that tried to hunt her in the previous chapter, and the people that landed into the Hell Gates that she indirectly killed by feeding them to the devils. And as the falling double is leaving the supermarket, he remarks that she forgot the last ingredient for the dish, which requires a human head. And even though it seems like she's speaking out loud, it's clear that she's aware somehow that she's getting watched by the public safety devil hunters. Because we see three devil hunters open fire on her with what I assume are 50 cal sniper rifles. And they just proceed to turn her into nothing but intestines. And I guess the Devil Hunters had the most perfect accuracy imaginable because we see the two cards in the background are completely unscathed. Which is just really funny to think about considering they fired that many rounds into the Falling Devil. And just when we all thought, you know, man, you know, that was really easy. I guess the Falling Devil really wasn't that much of a threat after all. Well... Similar to Makima when she got shot previously in part 1 by the Makima kill team, she gets back up instantly. And the following number reveals that it's impossible to kill her with any means of attacks humanity presently possesses. Which is interesting that she would say like that because this line almost suggests that the falling devil could possibly be among the few devils that remembers the devils that were eaten by Chainsaw Man. Because we know the nuclear weapons devil got eaten by a chainsaw man, but this line almost suggests that nuclear weapons wasn't the only weapons devil that was eaten by chainsaw man. And we know the hybrids, who are like Denji, the proper name from them, was also eaten by chainsaw man, so it makes me wonder if she could be referring to them as well. In any case, the fallen devil tries to avoid slaughtering any more humans, confirming that unless she has to kill necessarily, she is actually surprisingly peaceful. But the public devil safety hunters fire on her again, and we get a double spread of the falling devil using her gravity manipulation to make the entire earth float in the air. And she seemingly does this with no effort, really displaying why primal devils are some of the most dangerous devils around. And I would say that the falling devil could even be stronger than the darkness devil in terms of the widespread damage it can cause to an area because it really does suggest that if the Fallen Devil went on an absolute rampage, the destruction that she would bring would likely be enough to destroy an entire country's infrastructure in a few minutes, if not possibly a few hours. And as all of this is going on, the Fallen Devil cuts one of the heads of the Devil Hunters and says that now that she's scattered all the ingredients, all she has to do is go after Asa Mikaga and make her fall even more to complete the final dish. So this could mean that we could be getting more flashbacks to Asa's past, really just piecing together more of her childhood, and kind of learning even more of why she turned out the way that she has presently. And as she's saying this, the falling double gets stabbed in the back with a chainsaw. 
and we get a double spread of Denji running through the Falling Devil, calling her an Apple Thief, which is just kind of funny to me, just how she destroyed an entire area, but, you know, shoplifting is, is just a much bigger priority in a crime than, well, destroying a bunch of buildings and murdering a bunch of people. And just when I thought Denji was going to get one tap, similar to his fight with the Darkness Devil, Denji reconstructs himself, similar to how Makima would in part one, and cuts up the Falling Devil even more, laughing maniacally. In the final line of the chapter, we get from the Falling Devil is really interesting. This is the first time I've been on the menu. End of chapter. So, wow, Denji finally appeared to confront the Falling Devil, and I gotta say, even though I really am loving the slowness and the story different aspects of Asa's story, it is really refreshing that we're finally getting some action in this chapter, because the previous ones were definitely very heavy in dialogue. A couple of things I noticed in this is Denji's growth and how much stronger he's grown, because Previously, I don't ever recall Denji ever being able to regenerate this quickly from his runes, let alone controlling his body with his head cut off. It could be that he's reattaching himself using the chains he would to grapple onto objects and how he actually came back to life at the beginning of the story in part 1. Now, do I think it'll be enough to defeat the Fallen Devil? I almost feel like the answer to this is yes and no. The Fallen Devil did say that humanity doesn't possess weapons currently to defeat her, but given her reaction to Denji, the Fallen Devil could actually be susceptible to attacks from the hybrid weapon devils. Or she knows that if Denji were to eat her, similar to how Denji ate Makima, there is the potential that she could actually die forever and be forgotten, obviously referring to Vegeta's ability of erasing the devils from existence by eating them. And even if Denji were to begin running out of blood, which is one of his biggest weaknesses in part 1, which would cause him to just go back to his human state, he could always just drink the blood and eat parts of the Falling Devil so he could just keep on regenerating. Which means that this fight between Chainsaw Man and the Falling Devil could potentially go on forever. Hopefully long enough for Asa and Yori to get their relationship straightened out and for them to step in to help Denji. The only way I could see the Falling Devil beating Denji instantly would be to bring up his trauma, which is very apparent he hasn't gotten over, and he may even have some PTSD from it, seeing how negatively he acts in part 2 of the story, with him just being a lot less upbeat and a lot more depressed. The next chapter is scheduled to release 2 weeks from now, so in the meantime, let me know in the comments how you think the rest of this arc will play out and just how long Denji will last against the Falling Devil. And while you're thinking about it, considering dropping a like and subscribing to the channel.